Good morning, Mr. Aegis. Good morning. So it's great. Thank you ever so much for joining us here at um, Chertsey High, our, our virtual Chertsey High, um, and for taking part in our second careers interview. It's so good of you to give up your time. I'm sure you're extremely busy. So I'm going to start by just asking you to talk about your journey. What, what do you do? Um, you've got a fascinating uh, background, and we'd love you to talk about yeah. that. How did you get there? Uh, well, at the moment, I'm uh, a pilot for British Airways. I fly the uh, 787 Dreamliner around the world, um, mainly just cardboard boxes at the moment because uh, there's no passengers. Yes. Um, so uh, I've done a couple of cargo runs to uh, to China to pick up PPE for the NHS. Wow. Uh, been down to places like India to pick up uh, pharmaceutical um, supplies so that we can make the tests that we're using to to uh, test um, uh, key workers to make sure that they're okay to go back to work. Uh, even been out to Canada to pick up uh, pharmaceutical supplies there. So it's just really trying to get the, the cardboard boxes um, that are needed for NHS, but also, um, you know, if you order your thing from Amazon, it still needs to get from the other side of the world to the yeah. UK so they can deliver it. So, you know, whatever cargo space is left over is filled up with, uh, with cargo for, mm. for shipping supplies. Um, I didn't start out as a career as a pilot, though. Um, I left school um, at 16. Mm. Um, I was very lucky to uh, get a, uh, an apprenticeship with Ford Motor Company as an electrical mechanical engineer. Mm. Um, so I you know, left at 16, joined Ford Motor Company as a, an apprentice and a four-year apprenticeship and trained with them as an engineer, um, mainly a production line engineer. So um, that is uh, working alongside the production line team that are kind of literally bolting bits on the side of engines. Um, and I would be the maintenance engineer that worked there. So when the, the machinery uh, and plant broke down, I'd get my toolbox out and go and fix the uh, whatever was broke. And in between, um, if the machines were working fine, then we'd do preventive maintenance. So go and look at things. Oh, there's a leak over there. Can we see what it is? Um, you know, can we plan that machine to be down for a little bit? And what were you what were you good at at school that enabled you to get that apprenticeship? Um, the things that I did at school, that I excelled at school, were maths and science. Um, mm. They're my subjects. Um, English, I wasn't so good at, I must admit. Um, fairly similar to my, 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 my two boys, actually, uh, Ben and Jacob. Um, yeah, they're good at the maths and science. I'm not sure. Maybe it's the way we're, you know, as humans, we're wired. You know, we're good at certain subjects, not others. Um, so I was good at maths and science, um, which in engineering and aviation are the, the key subjects. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not saying that you should stop doing English and, yeah, and the other yeah. subjects because you do need them. Um, but yeah, it was that was my strong subject. So I, I did an apprenticeship and um, and yeah, and then it kind of moved on from there. So how did you get from, from an apprenticeship to, to being a pilot? You must have done something else, I guess. Yeah, well, I, I did my apprenticeship at Ford. And then um, when we finished uh, my apprenticeship, we got, um, just at the time, there was a bit of a downturn, just like there is now, um, back in the early 90s. This was for the, the first Gulf War. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, what happened was, you know, there's 160 odd of us that finished our apprenticeships. And um, there wasn't 160 positions in the maintenance teams. So mm -hmm. I was one of the lucky few. Um, there was 28 of us that actually got given positions. The rest got absorbed into other parts of the company and eventually yeah. moved into maintenance. Um, but, you know, Ford Motor Company were amazing. They looked after all of us. None of us got uh, laid off or pushed aside. Um, so I, I spent um, just over a year working as a maintenance technician. Um, and then they were building a new factory for uh, on the Ford site at Dagenham. And um, there were some big companies looking for engineers. Um, that knew the way that BA, uh, that, sorry, not BA, that Ford worked. <laughs> um, uh, and uh, they headhunted a bunch of us out of, uh, out of Ford. Um, uh, and uh, me and a few friends were, were, you know, taken across to a new company. And we worked as in the contract. So we built this new factory from scratch. Wow. It was literally a, 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 a field out the back of the factory. And um, we was part of that team that built. And that was good fun. That was amazing fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, but... And then I worked in the contracting industry, working in car factories all over the world. So uh, Detroit, you know, Japan, you know, all over the place, um, which was good fun. Um, but I was always getting on a plane. It was like I was always looking to the front. And, you know, a dream since I was a, a, a young kid was I'd love to know how to fly a plane. I thought um, I wanted that because for, I think pilot is a dream for many people, isn't it? Yes. But you actually yeah. did it. Yeah, it was It's always a dream. And I always look there and um, uh, there's one... Um, occasion I remember quite vividly I was flying back from um, from Belgium 
and uh, the aircraft, it was, it was snow all across Europe. There was airports closed in the front and center. And we, we had to land, um, not in the UK, we had to land um, somewhere else. And we landed and opened the, uh, the, the, the door. And I was sitting quite the, uh, near the front of the aircraft. It was only a small little turboprop aircraft. And uh, there's all this snow coming in the door and everything else. And I could see the captain come out, put his hat on, and basically sort the situation out. And yeah. it was like, and he got it all sorted. We was on the ground for about 20, 30 minutes, and off we went again. And he apologised to everyone and said, really sorry we had to do this, but, you know, the airports were closing. We had to sort something out. And just seeing that, I think himself, you know, not only is he flying the plane, but he's also managing the situation. He's, yeah. you know, really, really dealing with the situation. And I was like, no, I really want to do that now. <laughs> so I went along to my, my local airfield and just basically started to do some uh, some light aircraft flying, you know, little kind of two the aircraft um, and just plan for that while I was working as an engineer. Uh, and it got to the point where I kind of, you know, started along the process of becoming a commercial pilot. Um, and I spent a lot of my own money doing that and and spent two years training mm. to become a commercial pilot. But the, the bits that I learned in my apprenticeship at Ford's back in the kind of early 90s um, you know the, the you know working with you know thinking through problems how to resolve problems um, using those processes you know team skills are massive in all jobs uh, you know so you know everyone you know I know my boys you know or Ben certainly isn't massive about PE um, but actually those team skills yeah. in the workplace are huge because you you get to you know you have to work as a member of a team there's yeah. no job really you go into you know that you are just one person and you are you are the person yeah. you know i work in a in a flight deck with two three met sometimes four pilots but it's not just us it's the cabin crew yeah. it's yeah. the ground staff it's the engineers that fix the aircraft it's the fuel it's the ops control staff um you know it's a it's a big team that um that come together to make the, the plane get from a to b safely um with all the people on board it's so interesting you put it like that because i think many kids coming into careers think i need to learn the technical thing there's there's a i learn that stuff and i'll be fine yeah. but you try and say to them no employability is about having those skills and that's yeah. what you're saying yeah i mean my my recruitment process into into british airways um you go and do a whole day um in the in the recruitment center at um at heathrow and uh, first you go in there and you sit down, you do a mass and, and, uh, and verbal reasoning test. Um, so there'll be like a, a whole long passage and they'll ask you the questions about that passage, but there'll be five, five sets of it, you get 20 minutes. So they put you under extreme time pressure yeah, yeah. Um, and you need to, to go through it. But there's tips and tricks of how to, to do those tests. They're just different to what you'd normally do. They're different yeah. to what you'd do in an exam in a classroom. But you know, if you really want, to, like you said earlier, I had a dream that I wanted to do this, and I actually really, really wanted to do it. If you want to do something in life, there's nothing to stop you. Yeah. Um, yeah. You just got to have that drive, that passion. It's like I'm going to achieve that, and off you go and achieve it. Um, yeah. You know, it's you know, it's wanting to do that. I worked as an engineer in the car industry. I love cars. I grew up in East London, and you know, I was car crazy when I was younger. <laughs> I still am a bit. Um, and I got to work in that industry. I get to work flying. You know. Um, you know jets around the world and also you know still carrying on the engineering theme I, I run my own little software business so you know I you know because I enjoy it and if you yeah, yeah, pick yeah. a job you enjoy it you know if you enjoy your job it's not really work I mean you know my wife calls it my hobby and off I go to work you know it just so happens <laughs> that that British Airways put money in my bank account each end of each month but it's, it's, them, isn't it? <laughs> it is and it's it's that it's picking something that you're passionate about. Whatever it is, you know, if you're passionate about it, you go and chase that dream. I, I think that's a brilliant lesson. And certainly what you said about the team skills and the problem solving skills, I, you know, I think coming from you, that really shows the kids that that's what we, we when we talk about those things, we're, we're right to talk about them. Can you think of any other um, jobs around you that, that are slightly different that kids could possibly go into, even if they don't want to be a pilot, other things that involve them in the air industry? Um, yeah, I mean, in, if you think about the, the roles that get an aircraft from, uh, from the, the gate of one airport to the gate of another airport, firstly, you've got the, 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 the teams that I, th I think at the moment are working double time and overtime, is working out what planes do we have and yeah. what routes do we need to fly on. So they're sitting there doing all the, you've got revenue management that sit there and work out, well, if we send that plane, we can make that much profit. But actually, if we send this aircraft, we can make that much profit. And 
Yeah. Well, actually, we need to send it because we've got, we've got to go and do this job for the government, but we can send a slightly bigger plane and, and make a bit of profit. You know, so these in revenue management are sitting, looking at the money detail of, do we fly this route or not? Then it goes through to, to ops planning, where they do the, the plan of, okay, well, revenue management want us to fly 787 from A to B. Well, we need kind of three pilots. We need cabin crew. We need the fuel. So they manage that. Yeah, then you go yeah. through to, you know, it gets then sent through to engineering and then plan, you know, well, actually they want a 787, but we can't send that one because this has got that problem with it. Uh, and um, that's not allowed into the airspace because of that. So we'll send this one instead. Um, and it could be something as silly as like, you know, um, high frequency radios, HF radios for ultra long distance communications. If one of those are broken, you're using it. You've got the spare as a, as a backup. Um, but then it means you can't fly say across the Atlantic because you need to have the HF radios. You need to have two of them working before you're allowed to enter that airspace. So, but it's okay to go across land. So you'd send it to China, which is the other way where you don't need those radios and you know, they don't need to be on board. So just little things like that. So that goes into, you know, or maybe that aircraft has to go to engineering have now got a rush job where they've got to fix the radios. And Um, then you go through Yeah. And they've got to do it super quick. Then you go through to catering, cabin crew, you know, there's a lot of work behind the scenes and yet when you get on board to go on your holiday, you know, to somewhere nice, all you see is the cabin crew and you might, if, if you're lucky, you know, see the pilots when we're allowed out of our little box locked at the front, you know, it's, it's, it's like but yeah, but it's the, what goes behind the scenes. Yeah. It's like a, jigsaw, like a jigsaw of all those, those yeah. pieces together. And, and you're absolutely right. We look at the cabin crew and we look at the pilot and, what's amazing the way you described seeing a pilot and thinking wow he's managing the situation that's what you're doing isn't it you're managing yeah. that, that that resources I, it, it's been absolutely fascinating talking to you cliff i it i, yeah. can, I find your journey so interesting and so inspirational for our kids that you don't start off necessarily doing what you dream of doing but you can make your life work so that you can you can achieve that goal yeah. and thank you so much i I think your example at the beginning of flying um, NHS equipment back from China will touch us all in this difficult time. Um, I would love to welcome you into school when we're all back. Come and talk to the kids. Kids come in, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, I've, I've come in and done assemblies and stuff like that at other schools oh, uh, and just talking about the, 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 the journey of how yeah. to get from, you know, if your dream is to be a pilot, yeah. you know, or cabin crew or an engineer or, you know, work in IT, you know, if that's what you want to do, then go and chase it. Yeah, well... Thank you again for that message and for your time and what must be a busy time. Um, thank you again. I'm going to stop the recording now um, okay. and then, um, then we can check that it's worked. Thank you ever so much.